I'm Paul, this is Polymate 3D and today we're going to be looking at a two-way 3D printed speaker driver prototype I call Endeavour and then we're going to be comparing it against a branded bookshelf speaker. Let's get started. Endeavour is my first 3D printed speaker build to include two 3D printed drivers. The feedback from FD51's designs was that people wanted more bass and were happy with larger cabinets. With this in mind, a woofer was designed to complement FD51 series with a focus on anyone who had already built the open source version FD51 4OS. This then created FW81. FW81 is built solely for use with FD51. Its design was purpose built to match the SPL region of FD51 and can be used in two ways. These are WF81 4MN, which is built for use in 2.1 setups and has a higher SPL to help support this function. The other is WF81 4ST, which is more focused on being used in a two way like Endeavour. This later model has a dust cap that you can customize. This current prototype is running the first one as I need to change the tuning of the cabinet, but more on that when we look at the data from the build. Now when we work with multiple drivers we need to implement a crossover to control what driver is dealing with what frequency area. In the case of this build, a passive crossover is used which allows us to use Endeavour with any amplifier which will support it. Usually the simplest crossover is a first order which comprises of an inductor for the woofer and a capacitor for the tweeter. In sticking with the low component count FD51 was built upon, I challenged myself to lower this to just one component. This was done by using the inductance of WF81's voice coil to match the inductance required in the crossover and produce a cone profile which will allow a clean slope like the crossover would create. The result is a crossover which uses just a single capacitor if you would like to see a video on getting started into DIY audio as a whole, please put a message in the comments below. Moving on to the cabinet, the thing is freely printed with just over a kilo of PETG for each cabinet. The main cabinet piece is around 800 grams, so the cabinets alone will take three spools of filament. In later cabinet designs, I will be moving to filling the cabinets so that material usage and print times are lower, whilst improving cabinet performance. The FD51 driver has its own little internal cabinet within the main one to make sure it is isolated to doing the job it needs to do. This cabinet along with a middle section all act as internal bracing to help improve the rigidity of the cabinet. The design was purposely built to match closer to normal speaker cabinet designs to make it fit in with a more traditional bookshelf speaker, which leads us nicely to the competition. The GAL 3010S is a two-way bookshelf speaker as well with a similar cabinet size. The woofer is also of a similar size and is an example of what an entry level bookshelf speaker cabinet is like. This is what I have at hand and should be a good benchmark to compare how 3D printed speakers are comparing against traditional methods. Can 3D printing stand up against them or is there still work to do? Starting with the GAL bookshelf, the variance in frequency response is give or take 8.5 decibels and the bass response 10 decibels down is 86 Hz. Although note that it does hold off fairly well after this. This is likely room game effects in my environment, but still worth noting. Distortion, we are focusing on readings from the woofer driver and bass region. In the case of the Gale bookshelf build, the maximum we see here is 6.7%. How good is this though, and how well is my test setup working? To test this, I pulled out one of my favourite builds I've ever made called Krypton. This is a transmission line cabinet with a Mark Audio Alpair 7 Gen 2. This is not a cheap driver or a symbol cabinet, but it's one of the best cases of checking how well the test apparatus is performing and give us a good context of how the GAL and 3D printed speaker is performing. Now looking at Krypton's results, you will see that it has a rather nice frequency response. Base performance is high, only due to a bigger physical size compared to the other bookshelf speakers. Distortion figures are good at 2.3%, being the best we have so far. And with most of it between 100Hz and 40Hz region being less than 1%. This is great and confirms that the test and environment are working. 
So now onto the two-way speaker prototype endeavor. First things first, frequency response is give or take 10 decibels. This is slightly worse than the gale build, but not a bad result. High frequency response cuts off earlier as seen in the printed drivers, achieving 18 kilohertz. This is beyond what I can personally hear, but extension will still be worked on. Finally, speaker response in the base extension goes down to 60 hertz. This lower extension is due to the lower sensitivity of the drivers we're using and makes it her for a more full bodied sound. Speaking of how this sounds, here is a short clip of Endeavour and the Gale bookshelf speaker with the exact same piece of music as used previously as a comparison. Next is the distortion figures for the woofer, and this is where a problem rears its head with a peak distortion of 23.6%. This is massive and on lower volume levels completely disappears. This distortion goes up and down repeatedly and at first the sharp eyed of you may see that the WF81 driver is a 45 degree flat cone in this prototype and my previous tests with the cone test platform showed issues with this. If you haven't seen the video, check it out and you will be able to see how different materials behave with different cone shapes. I don't believe that this is just the cone that is creating this issue though. So what's causing it then? Get subscribed to be the first to find out when the video is up, along with other 3D printed audio and practical 3D prints. So what have we learned today? We found that the test on the woofers is working thanks to my DOI speaker build Krypton and that the WF81 woofer when pushed creates some serious distortion that needs to be overcome. We also found out that the low power handling it fares well compared to the branded bookshelf speaker. In the next video we will be bringing the test cone platform back into the limelight and we will be testing two different materials on top of what we have already tested to see how they perform. Thanks very much for watching. If you liked the video and the content please give the video a thumbs up and get subscribed for the next instalment. If you would like to talk about any of the work I'm doing, feel free to leave a message below or contact me on Twitter. Finally, if you really want to get into the detail and have access to data, extra speaker cabinet designs and FD51 4PE, consider becoming a Patreon and supporting the continued development of 3D printed speaker drivers. Thanks again and see you in the next one.